double it in. Hello. You may know already if you've read the blog or seen on social media that recently I went to Slovenia for the first time and it's an amazing place. So naturally, new place, somewhere I'd wanted to go for so long as well, I decided I have to learn a little bit of this lingo. So I spent the month learning some words, just really simple stuff on Memrise, nothing too complex, not going too deep, but just to give me a bit of a heads up. Normally, when I go to a place, I'll walk around and I'll film and I'll be like, oh, there's a word, oh, now I understand that word, and there's that word, and that together means that, and oh, okay, with that translation, it must mean that, and I get really excited. But for this video, because I've already had quite a bit of exposure to different sort of Slavic languages from travel and stuff, that I decided it would be too easy for me, it wouldn't be much of a challenge, so I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So I found these words, these examples of language around the place, I filmed them, and I brought them home, and I'm now going to talk about them here, now that I'm back, and as kind of a whole, you know, what did I notice as a whole from words and stuff around Slovenia. So let's talk a little bit about Slovene. One of the first things I noticed was sladoled. This word was everywhere, ice cream. So much ice cream everywhere, it's insane. And it's only April, it's like how much my ice cream is gonna be here in like July and August, insane. But anyway, I did also get a chance to sort of look around an ice cream parlor and notice, oh, okay. And something that kind of caught my eye there and in a few other places with different words and different things was, I'm guessing maybe cases would be the word for this, perhaps, I'm not sure. But I did read in my one of my favorite books ever before I went that it says Slovene has a dual form a rare characteristic in linguistics and so when you refer to two things you can use this different ending so for example one child would be otrok children would be otroci two children would be otroka and I actually noticed this um, happening so for example in the ice cream parlor where it said what well, I'm assuming was scoop it said okus okusa and okusi meaning kind of one scoop, two scoops, or three scoops. So rather than just scoop and scoops, you've got scoop, two scoops, scoops. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? So I actually saw that happen like in action, which was fun. Something else that struck me about the end of the words, I'm thinking maybe this is more to do with case perhaps, is that a lot of words, you'd see them and then you see them next to something else and they'd be slightly different. So for example, I said sladoled, right, for ice cream. Like on the outside of the shop, slalolet, ice cream. But then I spotted this sign and it said Waff waffle, waffles. And then it said kepiko sladoleda. So that sladoleda is ice cream, but it's, it's got that slightly different ending on there as well. And I noticed this as well with stuff like chocolado, jabolki, which you'd see then sometimes as jabolka, I think. So you kind of notice after a while that you just have to look at the bulk of the word and think that's familiar, that's what I know, which I think does come quite naturally when you're sort of in a place for a while. You do become familiar with stuff like that. Then I, I saw this sign in kind of this, one of the main big squares in Ljubljana, um, which says Toye Novi Macbook. So I learned from the course, so the memorized course proved useful here, but Toye was like, it is, right? So it is, I'm guessing new MacBook, new, Novi. And I also saw this on a bin, I think, and like a bin advertisement, not just like scribbled on a bin in Croatia. When we went to Croatia for a day and um, it said Nova. So I'm guessing that maybe Nova, Novi is, is to do with new. Perhaps it also has a Novo form. I'm not sure, I may have seen that, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so just things like that. Another example of where you see these endings different and, and changing which was, this was the biggest thing I think that I noticed overall on, as a whole. Another example was these signs from um, that square again, Emona, which was I think the sort of Roman town where Ljubljana now stands. So I saw mes, Mesto was the first word I spotted here. And I know from, I think, visiting a, a few towns in Eastern Europe where you say like, Sta, Stradi Mesto, is it? Sta, Stradi Mesto? So that Stadi Mesto, stuff like that. It's like old town, am I right? So I thought, okay, so that must mean town. And then I saw Mesta, and then I saw Mesni. And you think, ah, okay, it's that same thing. It's happening again and again and again. Um, something that, <laughs> that you can see on these signs at Imona was the word Vestopi, 
which I thought was really fun because I kept seeing this on buses, like on the doors of buses and things, and it's the stop. And you kind of think, what? But I want to get on the bus. Why are you telling me to stop? But I think it means enter. So that's quite a funny word. I liked that a lot. I was quite surprised by the amount of words that I recognised from um, other languages and not, not just like Slavic languages that I've slightly been exposed to before, but things like French um, and maybe even German, where there were words that you think, oh, that, I, I know that word. I didn't even need to, to think about sort of translating it because it was just there in my head. You know, oh, that's that. So I was surprised by this. Things like Frisse, um, which is the same in German for hair. It's a different spelling, but the, the word is essentially the same. So things like this were kind of nice to see, just to kind of help to make my vocabulary grow, even though I hadn't really spent much time in the country or spent much time learning the language, there was still a lot that was I was able to decipher, I think, which is which is cool. One more thing before I go that was interesting. Geographically, Slovenia at the top of that kind of Balkan um, selection of countries, if you like, very close to Italy, I found for a Slavic language, they almost had an Italian rhythm to the way that I heard people speak in the streets and stuff, which I thought was really interesting. Makes sense. Maybe I was just hearing things, but that's kind of how I felt. I could, I could hear that in the way people were speaking, which was really kind of quite, quite cool to hear. So uh, yeah, it was a really, really fun trip, really interesting language. And if you get the chance, definitely try and go to Slovenia. Okay, so that's it for now. Thank you. Bye. Havala. Adio. Slovenian. Is it signalled? Yeah. Okay. Slovenian. Cough medicine with clout. There you go. Slovenian. Yeah. There we go. Okay.